This is the Uptick Network Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Penny stock news and interviews from the microcap world. Public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world. With your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a very exciting guest with us. He is David Grant. He is the CEO and chairman of Omni Light Industries. Uh, they have a really fascinating uh, company, rapidly growing. They're in the high technology company that develops and uh, manufactures mission critical precision components u- utilized by Fortune 500 companies, including Boeing, Airbus, Bombardier, and, and many more. Uh, Dave, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Everett. Glad to be here. You know, give my uh, listeners a little bit of background of, of yourself, how you got involved, and uh, and a little bit of background of the company. Then I want to get into some Q&A later on. Okay, well, my background is uh, ocean engineering. And in that um, <clears throat> program, I got interested in uh, using satellites and high-flying aircraft for surveying the oceans, in particular the Arctic and uh, areas. Uh, and that led to an interest in advanced composite materials, which were being used in these uh, high-flying uh, aircraft. So I felt um, in the early 90s that uh, those projects or those products could be um, commercialized, and that led to the concept of Omnilite. And Omnilite is an aviation term, at least Omni is, that means everything. And light, of course, meant that we felt in 1991 that everything in the world was going to be lighter, so lighter cars, lighter aircraft, uh, lighter trains, you, know, you name it. Absolutely. And of course, that to be true. And um, so that's the basic premise under which we started the company. You know, I've been uh, looking at some of your, your financials and, and, and you must be one of the hardest working CEOs and chairmen out there. I mean, your revenues in 2013 was 5.3. Then you guys moved them up in 2014 to 5.8. And then 2015, you knocked it out of the park, park at 7.4. What has led to the increase of cash flow uh, EBITDA, and, and uh, you can talk about maybe your third or earning, uh, third quarter earnings also. Well, it is, um, it is a, uh, I think, a, a plan, a long-term uh, strategy we've had in place uh, for over 20 years. The company has been um, implementing that plan and executing very well. So from the moment uh, we start a project with the financial evaluation to the uh, shipping of the product out the door, uh, the company's been able to control its costs very carefully, um, has uh, obtained the gross margins in the last quarter of 67% almost. So probably one of the more efficient uh, manufacturing companies, you know, I dare to say, uh, in the United States and, and maybe the world. So that leads us to these EBITDA margins with, you know, we've been as high as 44% historically, actually, and I can't remember the number for the third quarter, but say 37% for the nine months to date. And as a result, the company has no debt, uh, pristine balance sheet, um, you know, everything you can imagine in a company that's, um, you know, humbly speaking, uh, well managed. Absolutely. My guest today is David Grant. He is the CEO and chairman of Omni Light Industries. Well, they trade on the TS. X Venture, uh, ticker symbol OML. They also trade on the OTC uh, QX under the ticker symbol OLNCF. Why did the gross margins increase 610 basis points in the third quarter? Well, we had a record uh, quarter of production. In our press release, we mentioned uh, 32 million components uh, I, manufactured. I that saw that. Years, used to be a year's workforce, believe it or not. <laughs> and so now, um, you know, if you if you spread that out over 12 months, uh, you're looking at 120 to 140 million parts manufactured in the year. Um, and QT, um, with all the work we've done with the production systems in place and the network uh, control systems and everything, I think we had about a 30% increase in production uh, year over year. So that led to the uh, super efficient um, uh, manufacturing uh, period we're in. I'm not saying every quarter will be that way, but certainly uh, that's a record for the company. Well, we're headed in the right direction, that, that's for sure. You know, I want my listeners to understand that your company is just not a one-trick pony. Would you extrapolate? Uh, I've seen that you guys have got like four or five kind of different divisions. You guys are are in automobile industry, uh, sporting. C- can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. We're, we're proud to have a fairly diverse 
um, which you point out is fairly unique background. So we do have the aerospace division, we do have a military division, uh, we do have a specialty automotive division, and we have a legacy sports and rec division that came from our work with uh, Nike and the Michael Johnson Gold Shoe Program back in the Atlanta Olympic period. So um, in, in those four areas, we do see growth um, in different ways and different times. So right now, the aerospace uh, area is growing. I think 38% of our sales in the quarter just passed were aerospace, which is a, a high mark, high watermark for us. The military depends a little bit on U.S. Uh, military budgets, uh, but we are seeing those um, that area grow. So I guess what we're saying is, um, you know, we're diversified enough that if one division's down, we're hoping that, you know, at least one division's up. So that's why the company's been able to be profitable uh, every day since we opened the door back in 1994. You know, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, your, your third quarter um, projections just came out, and I think you guys did a little bit north of $2.1 in revenue. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. You're almost 2.2. And, and, and out of the 2.1, what I wanted to talk about is where did that growth come from? Was it, was it international? Uh, you know, wh- where's, where's the majority of the revenue stream, streamlining from? Well, I think we could say that um, both the aerospace and military divisions are, are seeing and expecting growth. Um, we talk a lot about the aerospace super cycle that, that we've been in for the last six or seven years. And historically, the aerospace used to have, uh, you know, four or five years up and, uh, and, and two or three years back down. And so we dealt with these seven-year cycles. But now with uh, passenger traffic growing at five or six percent per year, mainly in, in Asia, we're seeing uh, Boeing's forecast for wide body, and I just mean large frame, not all wide body, aircraft being like 32,000 airships needed between now and 2030. So that's, that's a number that we're not um, in the industry has never b- dealt with before. So Boeing's ramping up their 737 production from, believe it or not, uh, 31 uh, ships a month. They're going to make 63 is their hope, uh, 737s in a month. And you have to hearken back to the days of the Second World War building B-17s before you know Boeing's ever had that kind of production capability. So so that, that of course, um, feeds the whole supply chain. And right in Southern California, where we are, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 13,000 suppliers, of which Omnilite's uh, one of the premier suppliers for every aircraft that flies. You know, we talked about uh, a little bit about the, the, the composites. Uh, you know, w- where is the fastest growing composites coming from? How do you guys bring that into the house and then go ahead and make that into products? Well, we, we're fortunate enough that the composites are uh, super attractive to many. They're not uh, common uh, other than the laid up skin of a 787, for example. They're not so common in the fastener uh, and engine areas uh, unless you deal with the fan blades and so on and so forth. So right now what we do is we, we use about 40 different materials from all over the world. Uh, Omulite sources these and manufactures some of them. Um, and so some of these periods of manufacture can be you know months, in fact a year in one case. So we bring the specialty materials in, uh, they generally to the customer specification, obviously, and then fabricate the parts in a very complicated, uh, progressive coal forging environment where the machines are, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of um, $500,000 to a $2 million machine. The setup can take anywhere from, uh, you know, six months to a year to get the parts running. And then the good news for the company is we're able to produce fairly efficiently at that point. So. We're probably some of the most uh, efficient floor space in uh, the United States right now in terms of output per square foot. You know, you bring up a very interesting point that I, I, I want to kind of bring out a little bit. What would you say that if you added up all your machines, what, what your assets are? Well, we, we just won the Foreign Direct Investment Award last, uh, it's actually in 2014 here in Southern California. And we had, we had invested between 30 and $50 million uh, at the time we won that award. So it's gone up from there. You know, the reason why I bring that out, your market cap's just a little bit north of $14 million. Uh, your float is about $82.0 million, and your stock price is at one thirty one. If you add up the assets plus the growth that we're doing, it seems like you guys are very undervalued here. Well, I think that's true. You know, it doesn't matter how you measure it, whether you look at uh, book value. We're probably trading, uh, you know, 0.5 times book right. um, kind of thing. And if you look at... Um, 
at sort of the EBITDA ratios. We're trading at uh, four times, you know, EBITDA, uh, maybe three times future EBITDA. So it's it, the market. I think um, where we are now with the good story, we're we think we're building. Our goal is to get out into the marketplace and tell the story, so the investors can be more aware of um, this opportunity. Where are we at in the growth of aerospace and the military divisions? and uh, special uh, automotive divisions also, which I know you guys uh, concentrate on, on those three different uh, departments. Well, it's, you know, we do, uh, we don't really save the growth within each area. We do uh, have uh, metrics in our financial statements, but I think we, we uh, lean on the fact that we can probably grow the company about 20% per year overall. And, um, uh, that's that's our focus in our in our growth plan for 2020. Uh, we have a number of initiatives that um, could accelerate that, but uh, I, I think we're comfortable with the organic growth being around 20 percent. My guest today has been David Grant. He is the CEO and chairman of Omni Light Industries, uh, and uh, they trade on the TSX Venture ticker symbol OML. They also trade on the OTCQX under the ticker symbol OLNCF. In closing, David, is there anything that you would like to get out to my listeners that you and I didn't get a chance to talk about? Everett, I think um, we've covered a lot. Obviously, in a public company, you can never have enough uh, customers, you can never have enough investors. And, <laughs> um, you know, we're doing our very best to, uh, to bring our opportunity to a broad market, and that's why we uh, listed on the QX uh, 12 months ago. Um, we've been able to move about uh, seven or eight percent of the shareholders into the U.S. over that uh, last 12 months. So we see a, a growing interest in the U.S. because our customer names are common, uh, whether it's Boeing or Airbus or Caterpillar or Nike, all common names here in the U.S. So that's one of our focuses, and um, that's our story, and we're sticking with it. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show today and telling us a little bit about Omni Lights Industries and where you guys are at and where you guys are going. I wish you nothing but the best. And I want to check back with you in a couple of months. Okay, Everett, we'd be pleased to give you an update. Uh, the next couple of months should be quite exciting for us. <laughs>